and would like to welcome you to the weekly talk show, Way of Thought, organized by the People's Go team. This week, as we have announced in advance, uh, uh, we, this week we'll be discussing about the, that uh, war and conflicts and the children's rights that need to be protected. Children, as you know, are the important for all the human beings, for every family, for every parent. They are invaluable indeed. That in the same way that uh, if we look at the whole world, you'll see that the, the children are that uh, the children uh, needs to be that they, they should be enjoying the love and that that uh, and also to, to be able to uh, to be grow up in a place of safety and security that uh, that uh, it is important also that uh, they also show us how uh, how we can provide the social world the, the society that have us uh, as well that uh, in the in that uh, recent weeks uh, that we have seen the children of Myanmar who are being targeted, who are being killed. The future of the children and the youth of Myanmar is still uncertain because of the because of the military hunter who has been using the weapons that they have to hold the power and they are destroying the, the future of the child the future of the, the future of the youth and the children as well. And that uh, the entire that um, in this uh, in this uh, revolution people has been uh, resisting strongly for over six hundred Days and that uh, that the fascist military hunter has killed over uh, over uh, that uh, over two hundred three hundred fifty youth and that uh, over sixty children has been arrested and detained according to the information released from the national unity government at that. Um, that the international organizations and the international community has been uh, urging that children should never be targets in an armed conflict. Children also have uh, also have the human uh, the full rights as a human beings. They are at the age they are not considered as adult, and the children should not be used as child soldiers. And that uh, children must be protected is uh, something that uh, all the revolutionary leaders and different groups have been always been encouraging, reminding, and despite that uh, the military. But the, the military hunter has been uh, ignoring such uh, such uh, such demands, and there has been violating the rules, targeting children at any at in any way as well. So we will be discussing what are the rights of the children that, uh, and what and also that uh, for those uh, who are fighting for the rights of the ethnic for the for the of all the communities, what are the rights of the children? That's something we'll be listening to as well. So this is what we'll be discussing as well. That uh, I'm, I hope that we hope that we'll be able to give her if the information for the knowledge that we can learn from that about what are the children's rights and what are the international standards when it comes to the protection of the children's rights as well. So that uh, recently in a little village of the Payan Township is a guy reading what the, about the incident that happened on the 16th of September. I'm sure all of you have heard about the incident where the ch innocent children have been killed as well. And such cases uh, that um, that um, most of the um, it, there are also countries which have been silent about the human rights violations happening in, happening in Myanmar. But whenever when it comes to the the lives of the children and that the children that are being uh, that uh, the, that 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 the life that they have lost a lot of uh, that a uh, lot of. Uh, that um, a lot of international community have cannot deny the, that that uh, brutality and inhuman uh, killing of the military hunter, and that even the the Secretary General of the United Nations have uh, condemned the such uh, such uh, at such uh, as at of violence as well, and that uh, based on the um, in the in the in the condemnation of the condemnation of the United Nations the Secretary General and the schools and the hospital and the clinics should not ever be targeted, and this is a clear violation of international humanitarian laws that um that they that uh, and that uh, that uh, this is one of the uh, major uh, the grievous uh, violations of international humanitarian law and they have also uh, that uh, they also have uh, also have the, that uh, condemned that that uh, military hunter uh, that um, as well so in the, today's topic today's uh, discussion we also have the speakers uh, though that so you can also uh, join us directly on us in the zoom session or you can also uh, follow us on the live stream as well you can also feel free to ask questions either on the 
the Facebook live stream in the comment box or by joining the Zoom session as well. Before we go into the, dis uh, the discussion, we have, uh, would like to introduce the speakers. We have uh, one of the speakers is um, that um, is um, no Susanna Lalasu, Minister, Union Minister of the Energy for the Ministry of uh, Women, Youth and Children Affairs Ministry. And we also have Courtney Wea, a CDM corporal and Go Francis is a child writer specialist. Uh, so we have we have invited uh, three speakers. My name is Sosai Tui. I'm from the Kitchen States of India Movement. I'll be moderating today's talk show. So in our discussion, so that um, that um, Minister Susanna Wolasu has not will not be able to join in because of the difficulty. She had sent us a video. So first first of all, I would like to share the video as well. That uh, that before we um, share the video of Susanna Wolasu, we also would like to uh, share with you uh, that uh, news reporting from the BBC News Agency about the the, uh, the, the interview of the uh, community and their family members from Layakong village this is our like i would like to share as well that i will share we'll also show the video after that uh, we'll give you uh, we'll give you the video recorded message of uh, the union minister then now uh, we'll go into the live speakers and we'll go into the live discussion Uh, we cannot hear the sound. Could the, the screen share? Please check the screen share because we cannot hear any sound at all. You can hear us now. Yes, we can hear it now. Please, uh, we have having some technical difficulties. So please bear with us. We'll share the video shortly. On the 16th of uh, September, the military conducted both uh, air and ground strikes uh, to Leyeko Village uh, Monastery School, killing 13 children and adults. Well, Stuart, screen share once again. Thank you for waiting. Is the video sharing okay? I think we can go to the next um, part of the program because we're having some a few technical difficulties. We are having uh, some technical issues in uh, sharing that they showing that the BBC reporting. So we'd like to go to that uh, to the remarks that that um, Sama Susanna has sent us uh, to, as part of her press, uh, part of uh, our participation to this talk show. My name is No Susanna Lasso. That uh, I'm. 
Minister for Ministry of uh, Women, Youth and Children Affairs. And thank you for inviting me to this uh, today's talk show. Today's talk show will also talk about uh, the incident in Lego village where the children, innocent children, have been killed. And we'll also talk, discuss this, and find ways to how to protect children better. It's about uh, 12 30 in the afternoon uh, that uh, that time. And that was the day where the, the where the where the skies are darkened for the children in Leyako Village. The children were killed by the area uh, shootings and bombings, as well as uh, from the ground troops shooting as well. That uh, 13, um, that um, 13 people were killed, including children, and 20 teachers and students were also uh, arrested as well. The military hunter is has been targeting the civilians and their offsprings instead of protecting them as a, their duty of uh, that the national armed forces. Such act of brutality is uh, violating not only domestic laws, but they are also violating international laws. According to the United Nations, that uh, according to the United Nations, that, that uh, there are six, uh, that uh, six grave violations. Uh, uh, in, in, in the six grave violations, the first is that uh, killing children and that uh, and cause, uh, maiming, uh, ma attacking and maiming uh, children. Uh, this this kind of act uh, constitutes uh, the war crimes according to the international standards. If they, if they violate such crimes, then they commit such crimes and violate such grievance uh, regulations, then they shall be held, they shall be held they hold accountable for that. It is important those uh, who, who want to stand by the people should join the revolution, should join us in, in the resistance to fight back against such grave injustice. In the Second World War, that the uh, Nazi, the Nazi Germany, who have killed millions of uh, the millions of Jewish people, um, they have what happened to Hitler and the Nazi is something we all know from history. Right now in Myanmar, we have seen many forms of a genocide uh, from the Rohingya genocide. Uh, the Rohingya genocide case is something uh, we all know that there um, that the case has been now this been now been um uh, been been uh, heard in an international accountability mechanism that if. If you see a crime and if you don't do anything, then you'll be considered same as guilty as guilty as well. That along with the perpetrator as well, that um, if that uh, you injure the researcher that the, that uh, the case of Ranger has been uh, that portrayed in the Genocide Museum, and there will be international justice system as well. And that uh, failure to uh, failure to act or failure to respond to a crime being committed, then it is the same as the perpetrator. So it is important that the entire country. Uh, country of Myanmar should not stay silent and we need to speak up we need to give our voice we need to amplify the plight of the children and we need to help to find out that uh, that that justice for these children on the 21st of September is a world peace day on that day the people will be uh, you know singing peace songs they'll be reciting peaceful and they'll also be enjoying the peace fantasy but Myanmar in September will only have uh, that uh, tears and cries and bloodshed in September because September is still not over yet because Nyama has been uh, covered with the, the songs, with the, with the sound of the bullets, as well as on the explosions, with the cries of the children. We will continue this way until there is peace in Nyama. It is important that we get achieve peace and that people should be able to live in a peaceful, transparent, peaceful tranquility, where they be able to sing, sound, and joy. It is important to protect the children as part of our fighting against injustice. Thank you very much. Thank you. That um, that uh, thank you uh, for thank you that the video that we have just seen just watched is uh, this message given by Dusan uh, Alalasu as a part of her contribution to the talk show as well. Now we'll try to uh, share with you once again that that BBC reporting of the uh, local communities from Lake Home Village.
I just saw my son go to went to school, but I didn't see him come back. I'm afraid to go to school. I'm afraid to go to study. The other day I was sleeping and I had a nightmare. I can see the children dying and I just can't sleep. On the 16th of September, Leyakon village has been targeted by airstrike, while the ground troops also targeted her. The village is situated in Dibay Township, and altogether 13 people were killed. The military started shooting at the monastery, at the school inside the monastery. The children who are still in school have been injured by the artillery. While I was we were in class, we can hear the sound of the helicopter. They started shooting. It's very loud. It's very noisy. They started shooting that in the south. So we ran to the north and they started shooting in the north. So we ran back. And so the teacher said that hide behind the table. The teachers are trying to protect us. So I was uh, just sort of like I was trying to uh, cover myself under the under the dusk like this. At the time, his friend Pondesa was also nearby. I told Pondesa, come, come. I told him to come with me. He said, no, he's not coming. He said, I'm going to run with another friend. And then uh, just a short while later, we hear a lock bang. And then he fell. So we can hear the guns firing. And then I tried to run away and I don't even, I, I climbed over the wall and I don't even know how I climbed it over. And then I, ran, I went into a, somebody else's house and the soldier said, come out, come out. And I said, if you don't come out, we'll shoot you. And we were shoot to kill. So I was afraid. So I just go out. And then they, they told us to uh, sit with other children. And I said that, uh, and also to not to raise our heads. And that uh, they also said that uh, the children, when the children are crying. So they said, don't cry. And they also get some medication to the injured people. And then they, they took two of our cars from the school and they put everyone who were, who were injured onto the car as well. Some of the people are not injured, but their brothers were, their brothers were injured, their brothers were taken, so they follow as well. Pondi is, uh, is the son of Didawi, and we found his body being picked up. It was, uh, he, he fell, he fell like, uh, not even like uh, like six feet from head as well. He was still, he was still alive. So they said, well, he need oxygen. Do you have oxygen? He said, yes, we do have oxygen. So I go, go and get him some oxygen. I think for 15 minutes, he was still breathing, for he was still breathing. But then uh, that it was just a boy, so that... Uh, that uh, he said that then he died and then he was taken by the he was taken by the soldier the mothers tried to retrieve the body but they refused to give him back give the body back to the mother six children are killed by the artillery and the military um that uh, it, military incinerated them on the, the next morning on the 17th as well i couldn't see my son so that I don't know, I don't know if he really died or not. Some people say that he was injured in the head and that he was injured in the arm. Some people say that his body parts were blown away. I didn't see my son's body. I didn't know. They were shooting from the sky. They were also shooting on the ground. And I had to, I had to run and I couldn't even look for my son. And that I was not able to wait for my children. How could they do this? How could they be this cruel? That because this, this kind of a lack of has been and we hope that we have never seen such uh, such events in the future as well that I'm also very sad that I couldn't see my son once again and that and also that I was not able to say goodbye to my son and that the fact that I had to give him up without seeing him for the last time it already really makes me sad so they took the, the soldiers took the bodies of the children who were killed in a in a in a in a in a plastic bag. So it is hard to identify exactly the which which children uh, were killed immediately. Zinwe uh, Pugh, a nine-year-old girl from Nyonsi Go, the the parents still haven't been still haven't got the body of their daughter back. So they are still hoping that she'll come back. We are a monastery school that we it's, it's not a formal school. We teach them like how to pray. We teach them some basic, uh, you know, that reading and writing. We are not a, we are not a people defend forces. We are not teaching children to be children to bear weapons. These are very young children who are learning here to be able to have some knowledge as well. But we cannot do anything against the military. The military uh, SSC they say that uh, that the PDF are uh, PDF are hiding in the monastery and PDF used that the civilians as a human shield and that's why we get it. I hear a gunshot and I was hiding. I was hiding. I hear the gunshot from the north of my house. 
that I, I had to get shot, but I didn't see anyone. And I was very afraid. So I was uh, I was scared and I was hiding. I didn't know, realize. And then that the military, that uh, the, the military, that the, there's a military convoy, the column came in and they went directly into the monastery. Thought, they thought I'll be safe. I'll be safe. And then uh, there will also be that uh, we can also hear the helicopters circling and that we can also hear the machine guns and that we can also hear the explosion as well so i i would try to leave i try to leave and said maybe like um when i when the helicopters start uh, flying i try to look at the way we can see the children are being taken as well the children are being again that uh, some of the children that uh, some of the children were short that uh, some of the children were short in the face and that they cannot even has it and i was uh, that when i see the bloody face and that different you know parts of the boat face missing i couldn't even touch it that uh, and then the military started to looting as well they took all the gold that are uh, four tickles of gold that i have saved they also had taken valuable it's not just me other people also have lost their valuables in their home because they were running away from what they like the military looted and took all that uh, precious things and valuable as well a lot of people have lost and um, that many as well as on the all your valuables after the after the attack when the military leave uh, military sent uh, the injured children and 15 local um, community members to the nearest hospital in yeu and ug the national unity government said that child uh, that uh, the, the case of these layer children being short will be um, will be presented to the uh, UN General Assembly as a revelation. The United the Nations Secretary General also has who has spoken that uh, perpetrators will be held accountable for the killing of the children in layer village. The children who have seen uh, that uh, their classmates being killed dramatically have been traumatized by the horrific events. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to study. I'm afraid to open my books, you know, before and I, uh, last night also I woke up. I can see their faces. I can feel the faces of those children who died. So it is important uh, that the soldiers stop doing. I don't want other villages to other villages to feel this. I don't want uh, this kind of event to happen in other villages as well because our ch that uh, that uh, we don't want uh, our ch we don't want our children to suffer anymore. That uh, we don't want uh, that we don't want the soldiers to um, as well. That uh, that uh, please don't do that. Please stop killing. Thank you for sharing the video. And this is uh, that the experience and that the sounds and the voice of the Delhi, the, the community, local communities from the from the Legong village where the people of Myanmar have shared that they are suffering and they're feeling. And such incidents have happened before in Kachin State, in Korean State. And these incidents are not new. And these are the local communities in Kachin and Korean and other area have, uh, have, have, uh, have seen such events before, but still, there is still the cultural impunity. And it is important for us to, to, to remind ourselves that we still have a lot to do to be able to bring uh, that, um, you know, those, uh, those, the perpetrators to, to be accountable for the crimes they have committed. So I would like to now turn to the that uh, speakers, uh, speakers for today's session. First, I would like to invite Kone Wing out, a CDM, a CDM surgeon from, uh, from the, after the, after the coup in 2021, that, um, the children who has been uh, uh, that shot and killed by the military, uh, there were over 100, including uh, children under 13 years of age. And very recently, that we have seen the Leyeko massacre, where the children, where the, the, the schools were school a school was targeted by the military, and that uh, that very young children were killed as well. In a Shribu Township, or in Shribu Township, also that um, that uh, at um, a secondary school, a student was was killed on the spot by the artillery fire as well. And these are the incidents we have seen the that uh, testimonials of the parents. It has been of great sadness for the people of Myanmar to feel that as well. As a as a former as a former uh, that um, you know former that serviceman from the air force and as a father, how do you feel about these incidents? At the same time that the air 
Air Force. Air Force normally is uh, not people. People tend to people tend to look up on the Air Force at that mostly. Air Force has uh, most graduate and that a uh, lot of officers. And yet we are seeing the incredible uh, brutality as well as on the um, the viciousness at the schools or the monastery school monasteries where the children will be uh, public spaces are being targeted. Why is the Air Force, con uh, you know, perpetrating such a crimes violent such violent crimes well most of the soldiers in myanmar uh they don't understand about war crimes they were given orders when the military leader considered them consider consider the people of myanmar people has enemy that uh you know that uh, if, if the people of myanmar oppose them then the military will say that we have to get rid of everywhere they have this kind of uh, um this uh, mindset that they will annihilate all those who oppose them that uh you know the many of the soldiers if you look at the soldiers in the war they will never kill children that uh, they will never do that as well on the 16th of uh, on the 16th of September, on the 16th of September, what happened to the Lego village where the, the, the airship, where the airship has uh, shorted uh, children in the school, it, that is incredible. The pilots in the Air Force, the fighter pilots are very, have very good eyesight. They know if you are running uh, that we can also see if an animal is, uh, you know, passing by. In this incident, I'm sure the children are running in, they're wearing, uh, there's the school uniforms of the white and green. They can see the children. They can see that these are children and they, yet they're firing shooting at the children that's incredible that's incredibly um the inhumane and that is also um that is because of the pilots for the for the uh pilots of the um the, the air force are uh, they are following the orders of male like blindly as well and then my message to the to the pilots in the air force and that this to the family is that that how can they how can they eat after killing children that they could that they how could they kill people that the way instead of uh, killing the people that they should be targeting like uh, male line and so in the military leaders but they should be um, they should be firing at those uh, military leaders who are already that the commander in chief of the air force and then my message to the commander in chief of the air force and that that every meal that they should be thinking about they should be about thinking about those the children they they have killed uh, that and in addition that you know, every meal that, that that they have every meal they ate uh, they should be able to do to feel that the children who are suffer in the uh, Yurkai state in Chin state and uh, in a current state there has been always been now uh, that the airstrike has been connected and that they should they, they should see that in every meal and that uh, the every bite they eat so they should think about whether the every meal they take is it uh, is it free from blood because if they continue if they if the air force would continue this way then uh, the people will have uh, people will be in great trouble because they are in the they are in the highest form of brutality so that uh, as uh, that uh, and in your that uh, what you have shared that uh, that uh, you you all uh, that uh, you also should say that uh, mentioned that uh, that uh, military doesn't also know what are what are going to do war crime as well that it is also important uh, to know what are the war crimes or what are the crimes against humanity. Even if you don't know clearly, if you know clearly what constitutes war crime, when you can see the children, the running, when you can see the children, uh, you know, running in different rushes, that I think they should know clearly that uh, even if you don't know what is, what constitutes war crimes, what are the crimes, I think it, there should be a basic sense of, human, of humanity that, uh, that the children are to be protected. And that when you see the children, that you they should, they should stop they should, they should stop killing them i think that will be the basic important as well now i would like to give a chance to go francis as well that uh, go francis is uh, is an expert on the child rights so go francis um can you also share can you also discuss uh, what are they uh, can share with us what are the rights of uh, children according to the international standards and why there are the child right laws or child protection law uh, adopted in many countries and the, if you look at that uh, that uh, the child right violation what are the what are the most common uh, the child right violation in Myanmar and the, as well as uh, what are the mechanisms in Myanmar to protect her children what kind of mechanism are we using to protect the children so I would like to invite Uncle Francis to share with us thank you for your question 
So in the beginning, I think as um, we well listened to uh, that uh, CDM surgeon, uh, we, uh, that uh, in Myanmar, there has been a, in Myanmar, we have seen a systematic form of brainwash. Based on my experience, even before talking about the children's rights, I live in Shan State. And when I, when I was young, I have seen this kind of event that, uh, you know, I have seen the children came into the villages and killing the children, killing discriminately. These are the events we have seen when I was young, when I have seen it. But this is happening not only in the ethnic areas, we now we are seeing in the Burma dominant area as well. These are, these are the events that has taken place in ethnic areas before. Well, we have seen that we have witnessed it. We have seen such tragedies, tragedies beforehand. Now, when we talk about the rights of the children, children are entitled to the rights of their human rights as adult, as a as adult person. As well, if you look at the international human rights standards, that also is uh, that also applies to the children. Children are entitled to of of more forms of human rights as well, like a that uh, that uh, rights of women, rights of children, right, that the all these are uh, that the as that the as the adults are entitled to these rights. Children children are going to do as well but children are not like adults sometimes they they don't have that they don't have the ability to protect themselves so there will be times when the children will be given a specific rights as well that uh, to be able to protect them as well that uh, and this is uh, that uh, this is that that the date from the uh, from the first world war there has been all rights so in 1923 the general rights was uh, even while there was even before the that uh, you know even before the United Nations were created there was also the League of the Nations that there were already a uh, child rights agreement that has been signed as well and then uh, in 1900 and then and then after the second world war when United Nations was created there were also child rights were enshrined as well that uh, whenever there is war or whenever you know there are other your children uh, that can, cannot protect themselves. Children have difficulty in protect themselves. So that uh, it is important to protect the children. That uh, and that uh, in the in that in 89 no, over 20 that we that uh, there was an international convention of rights of the children and that there are three the parts we talk about the rights of the if you look at the rights of the children there are 41 41 clauses in the 41 clauses we talk about the that children have the right to life right to life and that the children should be able to write as well that the children should be able to enjoy that that uh, uh that deserve that they that um, they also will be able to move live and we fully and that uh, children have the freedom of speech as uh, the children should be able to speak out out really as well the children need to be protected and it is also very important especially um that um that uh, when we are seeing the children must be protected from all forms of violence, such as even in the cases of um, conflict, children should enjoy uh, full protection as well. And that any form of the bullying or harassment that should be, uh, we should protect from the, from the kidnapping or the children being um, that arresting, uh, being arrested, and literally all these uh, must be protected in this according to the law. And Myanmar has ratified this uh, child risk convention on the, turn, uh, the July of 1986 uh, so that uh, so the, the problem is uh, is in the in the lack of compliance so as an international treaty Yama has already signed that because as an international treaty there are obligation which has given rise to the the child rights law in Myanmar. Myanmar also have adopted law so that um there we have the child right law in addition that um so to be able to uh, meet the child law, so we also have uh, that uh, you know that in the law it is uh, prescribed that clearly that uh, the child to protect the child rights uh, with a special focus on the rights specific to the children, and that if you look at the um conflict and that SAC uh, you know SAC violating uh, the value of sexual this incident has been discussed in the child rights law, and that uh, there are provisions of protection as well. There was a PowerPoint. There are six major grievances uh, that uh, and then Sema Susan also talk about this his major um this um this uh, grievance crime that have been committed and these are already enshrined and uh, protected in the domestic law so in the domestic laws it is also protected uh, as well that um it is uh, clearly indicated as well that uh, that uh, not to recruit the children and that to, to protect the children and then also that um, and also to uh, not to uh, make children to uh, care of not to endure or maim or children and that uh, not to commit any form of the sexual violence and that the what happened in here what happened in Lego is very sad because that they that the 
the school or that the school or that uh, the school or the hospital for the children are must be protected anyway that uh, and that it is also that uh, you know prohibiting the children by having access to that uh, humanitarian assistance is considered a crime as well that it is uh, it, it is uh, presented in no it is uh, it is some um, that adopted not only in the international law but also in the domestic law as well and that that's why the UN UN has said had also have a resolution and that which has says that uh, it's called it that says rape violations is grave violations of the human rights and I've said well that which are the the same as uh, that you know what of being adopted in Myanmar domestic law, so it is important to children to, uh, to be protected from. As you see, that Myanmar, as a, as a as a as a country, as a member state, to the this world that Myanmar did follow, but Myanmar also have a clear violation in the past with the recruitment of the children as child soldiers as well. That uh, now we are seeing a lot of such events as well that. Uh, that um, you know that uh, they are uh, they are setting up camps in schools and clinics. They are targeting children. They are shooting children in the school and the, in the school and that in a, in a place of aggression. So this is a this is a major violation of the rights and that it is important to do that as well. So we have to do uh, that when when it comes to uh, that. Such uh, international conventions, there are monitoring, monitoring, and that uh, the evaluation, and that uh, that we have a UN uh, that, uh, that it is important that UN that UN uh, the resident representative and UNICEF will have to monitor, evaluate, and also to file a case as well. This is what has been the rule. So every case must be uh, that it must be uh, reported as well. And this case uh, will be um, the UNICEF will need to file the case to the United Nations Secretary General, and the United Secretary General have a special report. To special report of the children as well for the children in the M conflict situation needs to be protected. That um, that uh, there are there are special envoys to this as well. For example, like. Uh, the current uh, the current special envoy is from Argentina that there is a system to protect the you know, as well it has already been on that side as well there Myanmar in addition to that Myanmar also is uh, ratified not only to the international tribe as well Myanmar also have signed also the uh, that uh, optional that uh, optional protocol to protect children from the armed conflict situation Myanmar has ratified that on the 27th of September in 2019 so Myanmar has signed the optional protocols and the pro optional of two goals clearly described that children under 18 must not be uh, must not be recruited the children must be protected that and this is this is like the special uh, consideration the special protocol that Myanmar has signed up to and then when the children's rights are being violated and that uh, then we have a committee like a child rights committee we can also uh, that, that uh, you know we can also combine them as well and that uh, that uh, it is also that uh, these committees are like uh, no active, no, uh, they are not uh, really as well. The committee that um, often that you, these cases can be complained to this committee as well. So they don't really have a working activity. So that um, that uh, if you uh, complain to the committee, that can also work. They'll be able to get it directly as well. The, another thing Myanmar is, can do is that when it comes to armed um, conflict, uh, is that uh, in Myanmar, that uh, there are many um, conflict going on that uh, and that, that the problem also is that uh, that when it comes to um, conflict often that uh, that children are children can't be uh, arrested children be arrested a hostage and that if they don't see their parent they don't see their brother they will arrest the children and this is uh, like uh, this is unlawful kind of arrest i've been called as a children against uh, children in both urban and rural areas I think it is important uh, that uh, we can look at also the another statement of the United Nations Secretary General uh, that uh, that uh, I think we can also uh, the further complain against them. Uh, these are the these are when it comes to the special protection mechanism and system for to protect the children. That's from the international mechanism. But what works is that in Myanmar that when it comes to that um, the, the that. Um, that uh, Myanmar always have uh, that uh, that uh, report. Uh, that there was also the special reporter on the human rights, Tom Andrews. Tom Andrews has been trying very hard, very hard. So when it comes to human, when you say human rights, the children rights also included as well. So he also has been uh, doing this in Berkeley and that. Uh, 
that uh, that uh, do, do, that uh, there are in his report they were mentioned especially about the children that over seven hundred thousand children are uh, being displaced and that over five uh, well, five hundred thousand children have to have become uh, refugees in their country in another country and that uh, that the children are also being uh, that is um that is what well, about sixty of the children are being uh, being uh, being uh, being, uh, being held as uh, hostages and arrested as well and that uh, children that the children uh, that the over 100 children have been tortured in interrogation in addition that uh, that uh, that uh, that about uh, 800, 800, 800 about 8 million children do not have uh, have do not have access to education could cover situation there are system where you can uh, the inform uh, inform that as well that Tom Andrew has been working very hard to be able to report uh, do you know about the human rights violation in Myanmar I think you can also uh, complain a file file a complaint to Tom Andrew so that he'll be aware about the violations that people are facing on the ground as well in addition for you no know, not just for Myanmar for the South Asian countries, South Asian countries. We also have the the UN that in that the UN are on in Bangkok. They are based in Bangkok. That's what they they also look at this human rights situation in Myanmar and they also issue reports as well. And that they that uh, human rights are uh, that uh, the the they also uh, report directly to the human rights council. Also, so this kind of uh, detailed information can also be useful as well. That uh, like uh, Susanna has said before that. Uh, that uh, you know that the over that the children uh, or the over 300 children have been killed uh, that uh, it is important to collect the data it is also important to file such do documentation and cases to the authors as well and this is not just about the child right but also that uh, for, for the human rights uh, that uh, we also have a double i double m or that um, that um there is an independent uh, investigation mechanism for Myanmar that also covers uh, that uh, child rights as well, and that uh, we can also uh, that uh, share the information as well. So, so we are just looking at the the international mechanism as well. That we have uh, under the human uh, international human uh, humanitarian laws and the human rights law. They also have from the international uh, child right law, and that there are also uh, mechanisms to go through the United Nations Security General as well. Another challenge that people in Myanmar are facing is that. Uh, you know that uh, because of the M conflict and that uh, that uh, when we can see that all the cis, uh, all the violation of uh, all the cis forms, cis major uh, grievous crime as well, that when children do not have access to school and that uh, children have a right to education in any context. And but uh, however, that uh, children must be protected at any time. So all these uh, all these rights of the children are being violated, especially when uh, there is a uh, fighting going on. Some of the children uh, that uh, have uh, do not have access to nutrition so they don't they, they become uh, that a new a nutrient and that uh, they know that uh, you know providing efforts to the hunter that is also impacting on the lives of the children some of the children who are in that uh, you know uh, fighting area the children will be uh, arrested merely on suspicion the children will be beaten and tortured and there is also arbitrary arrest and arbitrary torture so the children have to face a lot of such problems as well and that uh, that um, that uh, so the, I'm just giving you uh, about the uh, about what what constitutes a uh, national child right law in a summary. Thank you, thank you, Sia. So that Sia had. So we have listened to Sia Francis have shared with us what we should know about the child right. That uh, a lot of information that he has shared as well in Myanmar. Myanmar is uh, that uh, Myanmar needs to, Myanmar as a, as a signatory will need to apply by the by by the rules and it's also about the um that in as well that uh, that um, in Myanmar and that for children for youth and children who are anti, uh, who are under eighteen years of age you can hold it the CSOs and NGOs and NGOs are working for their right as well and their role also. It can that um, you know the rule is also important and because uh, to what extent can you also share like to what extent can the NGOs and CSU can work right now? Thank you. We also would like to give you another ten that you can also add this point to the discussion as well. Right now, I would like to invite uh, Kony Wing out once again and that uh, that uh, from the Kony Wing that uh, they have attacked her like um, 
the uh, Turkey, that uh, monastery, schools, clinics, and the residential areas. We are seeing more and more uh, an escalation of uh, airstrike against the uh, civilian areas as well. So I would like to know who gives the order to target the civilian uh, civilian spaces as and who is uh, civilian targets and who is responsible as a CDM, uh, uh, that CDM, uh, CDM, CDM surgeon from the Air Force. Can you share with us? Who, if you ask me who is responsible, I think it was the responsible person. You have to start with me online because from me online to the Minister of Defense and then to the uh, that uh, to do the to the um, that uh, from the uh, commander in chief of the Air Force. And then we also have the that uh, strategic commands who are being given assigned as well from the from the military operations units to the fighter pilots who received the, the who were given the orders and instruction as well. And that uh, when these um, that um, when they don't have the good will or intention towards the people and those are military hunter leaders are also responsible because they are giving orders as well. And their families are also responsible too because they are responsible there because in order for their families to live in uh, in the laps of luxury that they are killing the innocent civilians on a daily basis. They are making people suffer on a daily basis because just because they want to, they want their families to be the very rich and that tell you the, these are military hunters, these leaders are responsible. And there are those, uh, there are cronies who support the military, like the USDB party, for example, like uh, Dante or Nenanami, that that, uh, that that bullet last week. And these people who are, who are you know, really, uh, who are trying to uh, provoke the military into being more, more brutality, they are also responsible. So there are also soldiers who do not join the CDF movement, who do not um, have any credit thinking, who follow the order blindly. And these people, the soldiers who are, who are not CDM, they are also responsible for the crimes that are being committed on the ground as well. Thank you, Gone I would like to ask you a follow-up question. That uh, so that uh, that uh, enforces uh, that uh, it is important for the it is important the armed forces to to know about the international humanitarian to abide by the uh, to abide by the as well. Whenever a soldier a soldier who have a weapon who are wearing weapons in their hand, there is it is important to know about the code of conduct as well as on the rules of uh, rules of engagement as well as on the Geneva Convention. That's all they need to know. But however, that uh, that uh, the way that um, you know SAC uh, operate is that they don't seem to have uh, follow any code of conduct, and it is. Uh, that it is very much, uh, you know, they do whatever they want to as a, so, as a former soldier who has served and that, uh, so how, to what extent have you learned about the international human rights laws and the Geneva Convention as well? And that to what extent that the military, uh, that uh, military, and uh, them the, to what extent that people are ignoring the international humanitarian laws inside the military? Can you share with us? Thank you. Well, in the army, there is a code of conduct of the soldiers that code, there are 60 code of conduct, consistent code of conduct for the soldiers. We have to comply with it. They usually the expression that you must uh, follow the code of conduct like you're close, but they say that often they, that's the more too, but those leaders who are telling the rainy as to follow the rules, but they said, uh, no, they don't follow these uh, statistic code of conduct. And that, uh, you know, they don't consider like uh, the episode or the, 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 the pants that you wear on everyday basis, but uh, they, every Monday, they will ask us like, what are the rules? that uh, what are the rules that we have to follow and they would ask that that uh, and that uh, however they they will ask like what are the what are the what are the code uh, of conduct that we have to follow towards our seniors uh, by our sub, our superiors but they will never think about the code of conduct they need to follow towards the subordinate and this uh, that uh, in a way they are they simply are committing the crimes and killing people simply because they can't that i mean when i was as a soldier i don't understand that what just are that uh, and that in 2010 uh, I want to uh, Shan State in Poland to attend uh, like a mobilization training and that uh, that uh, they say that uh, in, even the trainers or so trainers will attack uh, their cadavers with a personal insult with a personally and that uh, that uh, that, uh, that uh, they, sh they do not recognize how for for therefore working hard for the development of the country and yet that they said even in those uh, that uh, in the military mobilization training they would uh, they would uh, use they will use a fake news and misinformation 
to discourage her, to tarnish her, uh, that uh, image and reputation that, that uh, I have served 23 years in the military. I don't know anything about Geneva Convention or that how to treat the prisoners of war. I never really understand that as well. Only when I, and I, when I understand that about the, the, about the, the Geneva Convention and that uh, and the prisoner of war is that when I joined the CDM movement and when the, P, P, the PEOs and PDF uh, that uh, talk that uh, when the soldiers are, uh, they give up, they surrender, they will not kill the soldiers. And that uh, instead of killing the soldiers, that when they see older soldiers, they would even, uh, you know, they would say, they would be very polite and say, that, oh, so that they will call him ankle, we don't do anything. So they were trying to console the soldiers who are, who are frightened because of their war. They were asked, like, are you hungry? Do you want to have a smoke? Do you have to have a cigarette? Do you want to have a like? Because the way they treat, the, so the enemies is credible that are from the EOs and from the PDF. It has been uh, the incredible to see that even for those, the prisoner was the way they treat those who uh, the surrender is uh, special. And that's why and it's only then that I also learned about what is the Geneva Convention and that it is important for the EAO and BDF to uh, follow their Geneva, uh, the, the Geneva Conventions, that it is that, that they are following them. That's when I learned about it. Thank you. We can hear you, yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I have finished. That's all I want to share. Oh, thank you, thank you. I thought we couldn't hear you anymore. Thank you, Gone Wuyong, for sharing uh, that uh, you know in the, that uh, the fact that. Uh, of their arms, the, the military officials and command officials and commanders were responsible, and those who are also provoking on the social media also that uh, what so that's something also we have learned, and that it is important for the people as well as and those uh, who are still people also need to recognize that those who do not join the CDF movement who continue to serve to the military they should be uh, that I think that that, that uh, you know it's time is getting short and they need to stand by the people they need to stand by the righteousness as well. Now, I'd like to um, ask another question to Co Francis. Francis, uh, that you have already shared with us about the international, the international uh, children, children rights and children rights laws, international human rights laws, and the as a as Myanmar, as a member state, uh, member state uh, the, who, that, uh, and that who, and this, uh, who has ratified the international uh, children rights law, and that uh, and that also that uh, that uh, you can also we also have seen that the organizations now not be able to do that too much as well and that we are also in the situation like the one there are we are seeing a lot of military offensive what can what can what can families do for their protection of their children as well and that uh, for children who are suffering because their parents have been arrested or detained for their for 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 many of the reasons to what extent can we provide a safety to those children who have been as who was who are separated from their families and that as well that uh, now that now is the time that the in the UN uh, the General Assembly is being being held. So I think uh, what will be the what the what kind of uh, action should the uh, what kind of action should the UN does and what kind of uh, uh, that uh, you know what kind of help we can expect from UN. Thank you for your question. So that um, you know, in reality, uh, some of the questions can be very hard to very hard to share as well. That uh, as right now, that uh, you know, as the parents who are in the armed conflict area, they will need to protect their children. Often, the parents, uh, no parents, and the parents need to understand that this is not a normal time. That, for example, in Leyeko, that Leyeko, when the children hear the airship, when they hear the helicopter, when they see the soldiers wearing uniforms, and that uh, the parents need to, uh, that the children, we see that in the, in the, in the, in the video, in the, in the interview, the children is afraid of hearing about the student, about the other uh, student. This is a trauma this is called trauma the children have been traumatized by the by the incident uh, by what happened to them at that time it's important they are guardians they are they are do the it could be parents it could also be family members they are very important because they have to stay with the children that instead of, you know, because the children are waking up and just crying and that they should not be shouting at the children, they should not get angry and support them very closely, support them warmly. So this way, the trauma, that the extent of the trauma can be, uh, can be mitigated 
teach it to the children, he support the children, the understanding. It is also important that children meet their full basic needs. Like they should be able to have a full meals. They should have a, they should have a clothing. They should have a safe space to stay. And the parents should be able to uh to be able to also to uh, treat them to feel to make them also to make them feel safe and secure and that uh, their friends and that their families and the parents hope should be able to give a, give a chance to children to live normally so this way we can also mitigate as mitigate their trauma as well but the children are different and that they may be facing the same event but they might feel differently as well so there will be different levels of understanding as well in some of the uh, some in some that if you look this is also important if you have a counselors then you should encourage the children to talk to the the counselor as well because uh, this kind of it is not yet the therapy or the psychological intervention or prognosis but uh, you know by speaking out measuring what you feel also help the children do feel better as well when the children cannot sleep at night and that uh, whenever they close their eyes that they are very afraid that they need a treatment they need a psychological treatment and that uh, they also need the, the support as well and that uh, and that uh, that uh, for the psychologists as well that uh, that uh, we also need to to uh, give them some therapy therapy as well as counseling something we also need to meet uh, for children to, for those who are traumatized will need to see a psychiatrist to get medication as a treatment but that's the last stage but before when we go that we send the children to that level it is important to make sure the children in our environment in our milieu can be able to do their job they should be able to do their work on a regular basis we should help them to get back to the normal as so when we have a such emergency situation came at, and that it could be natural disaster, it could be man-made disaster. Often, it is important uh, to give them that uh, to give them uh, some uh, child children corners where the children will be able to speak their feelings, their their emotions, and they should also be able also to uh, talk about the crisis, the situation that the children should be able to have a regular place where they can share. That helps. That really helps the children a lot. That it is if you, if you can uh, provide such care to the children that will be useful. It's not just the children. Then often the parents are also very depressed as well, and that they might not be able to take care of their children. So it is also important important thing about the parents too, not just the children, that uh, to be able to support the, ch the children, that it is also important to give uh, the, you know, a chance to the, uh, to, the, to the parents as well, and that it is also important that the neighborhood needs to help the parents and the children listen to them and share this but and then to try to understand what they're going through, then that will also help them mitigate the suffering of the family as well. Now, the times are difficult, but uh, there are many organizations uh, that uh, it could be international organizations or UN agency or their local organization. It is important to trust the local organization as well that uh, during the M conflict and what is happening, especially when we provide uh, humanitarian assistance, there are many challenges as well. And that, uh, that uh, of course, people also, you know, were also complain about the providing humanitarian There's sometimes uh, there could be a local organizations that they, you can work with those such local organizations on individual basis. It is important to, to encourage a localization and also trust support your trust in the local organization sometimes the criteria will need also need to be made to be uh, relaxed as well and that sometimes because of the conflict situation it's not possible to follow all the protocols and the financial rules and regulations then they need to be relaxed it is important that the additional and organization respect that and and then encourage localization as well. it is also important that, that uh, local they need to engage with local organization to provide assistance to, uh, as well that the, the process of international organization is to support the people if they cannot support the people then they have to question themselves about their own existence why are they here they are not supporting the people to be able to really support the people in need it is important to engage with the local organization the last point i would like to make is that for the um about the human rights violations that uh about that, you not know, just the children, and that, uh, that we also it is also important to complain such a human rights violations or the human rights violation to the to the special envoy of the UN Secretary General as well as to the Human Rights Council, to the WIWM, to the UNHCR, that uh, or the, the reporters or the human rights for the, the human rights situation. It is important to collect the data and that uh, if they share the data with these institutions so that your voice will be heard as well. And these organizations institutions are very busy. They 
will not be able to have to take the time to go into the, the study. But uh, what we can do is that uh, our challenge also is that uh, you know, when when we and the, when you engage with the other other international community, there could also be challenges as well. Like for example, like uh, children in M conflict, and that uh, of course uh, that uh, sometimes you will see one or two statements and they stop there. The statement of the UN Secretary General and statement that there is much more there is much more being done as well. What we need to do is important to amplify the voice of uh, the voice as well and that uh and that uh, it is also important also to uh, to uh, raise the awareness, raise the knowledge, and also raise our voice so that people know about it, that people know about what is happening uh, as well. Thank you, Sia, for giving a very complete answer in a very short time. So that what we need to know about the children's rights and as well as uh, what we can do as uh, the role that people can play as well for them. So thank you very much for sharing. I think uh, we, that... Um, that uh, before we end the close, we we end the before we end the, the talk show, we also like to give a hand uh, to uh, give a chance to the those who have raised their hand as well, and that uh, after the speakers have responded to the question of the uh, participants, then we will uh, that uh, end the sessions of uh, today's session as well. So if you have any questions or clarification, please use raise your hand, or you can also write your questions or comments in the chat box. Thank you. So we have a participant who has raised your hand. Is it a no or a no? I'm sorry if I'm uh, mispronouncing your name. A no? Yes. Please call me a no. Okay, a no. You. Um, yes. I want to ask Go Francis a question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. That, um, so, I guess so if you look at the what happened on the 16th of September, the killing in the of children in Layago, and that UNICEF Myanmar and the Save the Children, the Save the Children, children organizations have uh, that uh, you know that um, that um, that um, they, they the way they take action or the way they have issued statements. How do you see that as well? That uh, have they also issued a statement? Are they taking action at this well? This is the first question I would like to ask. Secondly, is that uh, what is uh, that uh, based on the current context as well? Now in the social media, that uh, just my sharing my own personal opinion that uh, no, like uh, you have you have like uh, you know that. Uh, and that uh, that uh, you know uh, that uh, when you see uh, that uh, you know we talk about the, the way a child has been treated by in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a for the orphanage right that um, the way the monk is treating is as well it's an orphanage it's an orphanage but the children that he takes care of the children so it's a monk it's a monk and then uh, a four year old was uh, you know you know you know was uh, the child was uh, the child was being uh, you know uh, the pick up by the monk and then uh, the way they, the child has been treated looks like uh, some sort of uh, harassment or like uh, abuse. Uh, can there be action taken against such people? Go for instance, if you can, uh, is, can you and uh, can you respond to the question about the what uh, that uh, you know about the statements issued by the Save the Children and UNICEF and that uh, that uh, the question the, the question also is that uh, is that uh, can you uh, give uh, them a practical answer a practical answer on other UNICEF or the other uh, children organization to work in also I would like to request you to give it and a practical so trying to uh, be, be as one as possible to the question as well uh, that uh, you know right now what the, the current situation what is happening is that we are that uh, so they we can see that they would not try to side as well. Even when they write, they will try to be neutral. They will, they, although it is not happening, that they would not uh, try. They would try to be very strongly as well. So for the for the case like to play a call, when you have a true cases, when you have a cases where the M actors are um, committing violence against the children, then we are monitoring in the monitoring evaluative mechanism uh, that uh, it start working. That it has to be uh, that um, you do as well. But how? Whenever the report, when the report is prepared, that there will be a detailed reporting as well, and that uh, and that uh, however in the in kind of taking actions again, the public trial is still weak, but reporting system it goes because the report will go to the uh, United Nations Secretary General, and that the Secretary General will verify if the case has really happened, and that uh, often that um, they what they will also they, although it is in the current media, they will themselves check the news if it really happened, and then uh, they 
they were reported to the uh, they were reported to the U.S. Secretary General. So another group is that uh, also asked about the save the children. Yes, save the children. They do their work when it comes to children. They have reports. They they are so they are also uh, that uh, you know they, they they do have self reporting. But um, the the problem with the media is whenever you issue some the media, the impact is not a problem because uh, if you are uh, like a local organization, that could be a problem. So we have also have to be careful about uh, having repercussions as well. It is not just one uh, that was uh, it is, a it is a situation not just for one organization for the there are i mean what i'm saying is that there are not only these are the children of unicef only two organizations working on children there are many organizations who work for the children right as well so these organizations and local both international organizations they try to stay they they do not you know they do not stand on any side they try to stay in the middle to be able to continue working this as well and that you know that the case about the the monk the monk has uh, that the monk has uh, that the uh, orphanage and then they were be, you know, touch the children improperly, and that, uh, you know, that that, that, that the, the monk is, has been uh, ordered to do that. He wants to do that, but however, the children, the children are being uh, touched improperly. The children, that's we call it the sexual harassment. In that, it is all you know, the children must be protected, and this is a crime. It is a crime. They cannot do it as well. So that, according to the, the charit law, that touching children improperly is uh, constituted sexual harassment, and that sexual violence. If the children, and then, then there may be. Uh, if we see that uh, they do the public thing, that we can also, if we investigate, there will be other incidents where the children have been improperly touched or sexually harassed as well. It is important to um, take action. It's important to investigate and take action. We don't know right now in the domestic court uh, to what extent the law can be done. This is a major challenge with that as well. It is if you want to, uh, if there, there are still si the situation, current situation, it will be very difficult uh, to do that as well because we are even in normal situation or even to uh, that is. Uh, that uh, that uh, to be able to take action as well that uh, that we it will be very difficult there are laws to uh, there are laws to take action and we have domestic law international laws but the same the case uh, will disappear even before reaching the court that can also happen that is something that could even worsen in current situation i hope that i have answered your question Thank you, Sir Francis, for answering the question. So, before just before we end today's uh, talk show, that I would like to ask uh, Kone Wei Ang that Kone Wei Ang uh, to give a chance as that uh, what is the message you want to give to that uh, soldier, to, to the to the to the uh, to those who are in the army, that uh, those who are still killing the people, though who are still if you they, they don't have a chance to try the city and they don't have a way for them to run away, what will you tell them to do if they that? Uh, what will be your recommendation for those who cannot leave? Well, that uh, that if you want to join the CDM movement, there are organizations which can help you, like uh, People's Embrace or that uh, you know People's Go, and as well as and then like uh, Mothers Mothers Embrace on that uh, why Soldiers and Wife, and that these are the different organization where you can engage with uh, for the CDM. If you cannot leave, if you cannot leave, then it is uh, that important you become an informant. You become an informant for the revolution forces. Reach out to them. As I said, you can also register as an informant from intelligence from there as well. That uh, because of your family reason that if you cannot leave, if you are too scared to leave. Online, yeah, that you can through online or you can reach out to the to a. Uh, the revolution to register yourself as an informant so that uh, that then that, that might work for you thank you to the uh, to the to all the uh, the listeners thank you and the who are watching us out uh, that we like we are we are coming to an end of the talk show that uh, war um, conflicts and that children rights to be protected we listen to the expert we also listen to the dual knowledge if you look at the answers and the videos uh, that we are share the context of the children in Myanmar we're not talking about the children right that it is important to protect the children it is important to ensure the survival of the children it is important to make sure the children secure and the how that level is low the level of survival or protection or the security of the children is extremely low and the same that you were discovered from the dog show as well at the same time that it is also important that uh, that although we will not be able to use all the rights and type that we are trying to do i think it is it is also important to keep them that uh, you know, the, the, it is also important to able to discuss what can be done what can be done to uh to work on it as well 
and then to the to all the part to the participants who are joining us or what i do remind i would like to remind before we end the talk show is that uh, as discussed and earlier that in the the children in the m conflict and the crimes committed on the children during the during the conflict there may be six major crimes and that has been uh that that uh uh, that uh, Susanna Susanna Halasu, Minister of uh, the, the Minister, Minister also have uh, shared about it as well. Uh, Therefore, Francis also has shared about it as well. And that uh, the Sergeant Nguyen also have shared about uh, shared about the uh, the when they come to the war crimes and the situation the situation in the army as well. I think that I would just remind you of the six major, uh, six major uh, grave, uh, grave, uh, grave violence as well, Francis, about recruitment and use of children. I mean that children being recruited as a child soldier, the children being used as porters to carry weapons and ammunition. And this is one of the, the one is one of the six uh, that uh, the, grave, uh, the, the grave uh, crimes as well, killing or maiming of children. That is also considered uh, the second of the uh, highest criminal highest criminal action, the sexual violence against women, and the attack against schools or hospitals, abduction of children, and denial of humanitarian access. All these. Uh, they all these are considered as uh, six uh, that are uh, grievous uh, that is grave violations against children during the armed conflict and that uh, these are that uh, and when we uh, that uh, when we uh, take into consideration of what is happening inside Myanmar we're seeing that all these uh, violations are being committed by the military and that uh, when we see the people uh, that are losing their children uh, the families are suffering from the from the loss of the loved ones it's important to think about that and it's important that we need to contribute to this revolution to bring end to such a humanity said by click for more or like it doesn't matter how much or how much are being done it is uh, important they may be military may be threatening our children threatening the our youth and the future it is important to stop them it is important to stop the bloodshed it is important to stop the that the, them from just destroying the lives in the future as well so from this uh, today talk show i would like to urge you to not to uh that uh, to to stand strong to stand strong and remain committed to committed to the revolution to be able to stop them what is the all the horrible events are happening right? i would like to thank the speakers for joining us i'd like to thank you all for joining us i would like to end our talk show here thank you very much indeed have a good evening